It's just because I need to watch it, but I didn't have time. <laughs> We're going to start the episode the like that, like ghetto. No. We're going to start no. ghetto. And I was going to tell you how cute you looked. It is. You I probably look- have brown under my fingernails from the dry shampoo because I use the brown dry shampoo. Okay. <laughs> We're going to be gross. Uh, I was going to tell you how pretty and cute you looked. Oh, and, thank and, you. And thank you're like, you. I got to scratch my lice. <laughs> That is not what I said. I said I didn't have time to wash my hair today. Oh, my gosh. I think that was one of the, um, first of all, very quickly, Aztec Chevrolet, Aztec Ford in Goliad, Texas, Aztec Chevrolet in Beeville, Uvalde Chevrolet in Uvalde, Texas. Um, The Ford store just got a Ford Bronco Raptor, which is freaking gorgeous uh, if you're into that. And then, of course, Old Salt Coffee, our friends uh, at Old Salt Coffee will give you a 10% discount with Trevino 10. Oh my gosh, I love when the Trevino. box arrives at the house. Oh, you literally so like good. cut it open and the smell of coffee Pick just comes cherries. out. Pick so cherries. And, and for those of you that have been watching the special, thank you. And the shirt that I'm, I am wearing is Rao Western Wear, mine and Renee's brand. Uh, we partnered with a very close friend of ours to, to do that. So please, Oh, lots of people have been hitting me up, please. asking me where this shirt is from. Well, can I say, like, I, we got so many great... Um, comments on the on the rebecca creek podcast did we really people were like oh my god best podcast yet the way that you guys were so candid like i, don't I know didn't what, see those comments i need to go I back and look did, at them i but, i was worried it was a little I, <laughs> I was worried yeah. it was a little boring yeah i was concerned that but that because of the of all the things going on that it, it might have been um but it's also hard because we were in a room with our family and friends, so I think it's hard to like gauge. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, I. It's hard when 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 we miss a week of podcasting because then it's like, oh my gosh, like so There's much is so happened. much to talk about, right? And and I think what I want to talk about is is our marriage and really. Well, we, I mean, we did Simple Man debuted. It debuted. No, I just wanted to talk about the fact that like it's hard. Like, yeah. I have been so, like, stressed and concerned, and then, you know, we're promoting and then trying to do a family spring break. It was spring break. It's we been were a lot. We were in L.A. for a I few mean, days. Been... We were home for 24 hours to do laundry, unpack and repack, but at the same time, your sister and her family was here visiting <laughs> on that one day to turn around and leave for New York super early in the morning the next day. To come back and Garrett had already like started back to school and we missed a few days. So we literally just like oh, man, jumped was... into back to normal life and the routine with baseball practice. And now Delilah's in soccer. I don't know if we've talked about that. Yes, but... it's the cutest thing. Her and, little shin guards. And we've got two different games in different directions. Yeah, it, was, like... it has begun. It uh, nice. but, but I think for our marriage, like it, it, it's it, these past few months have been hard. Yeah. You know, and and. You know, I remember, like, um, Adam Sandler talking about, like, anytime he premieres a movie that he's just sick to his stomach and freaking out. And I really felt that. Because, I, I, you know, you put yourself out there and you just hope that, number one, it, it resonates. And number two, that, that people like it, you know. Well, and more than, for you, like, even more than a movie, like, a movie is a big cast. And yeah, there's other people. There's, there's a writers, screenwriter. There's, yeah, and this you is all is, me. Is super vulnerable. It is all you on that stage by yourself. You know? And when people make comments, they're all directed at you. Well, and and I think that people don't realize it. Like, I'm a human being. Yeah. With a real heart and a real soul, and I and that's why that's what I hate about the internet is that people people they think well I don't know that person or I don't see that person so I can just shit all over them. And, yeah. and it's like, and by the way, most of the people that that have had bad comments towards me are the same people that say bullying's bad. And I'm like, <laughs> but you're you're bullying me. And my thing is like, you know, just move on. But yeah, you know, for our marriage, you know, I was very proud of us, you know, and and we have been keeping it together. We've had a couple of moments, yeah, of, of like, holy shit, this is a lot. Well, right? for for me, I thought the way I explained it to a friend was because I I was so good in New York. I got to catch up with my two college roommates, my, my best friends who were in our wedding and I got to catch up with them. And, um, I got a little emotional with them because I just told them, I said, 
for me, it feels like we're trying to act like everything is normal for the sake of our family, for the sake of our children. No, we ain't fucking normal. But but what's happening right now is not normal. And I think the, for me at least, trying to keep up the facade of everything just being normal, it's like it's not. It's hard. And, and, <laughs> it's and, hard. And we have some friends that, that you know, sympathize. And we have friends that... But have we have friends who think it is normal because we act like it's yeah. normal. <laughs> we have we have friends that are just like, well, you know, it's just a Torino's. And it's like, no, we're we're doing things that are crazy. I mean, this is it's hard. And, and I have been completely sick to my stomach about it. You know, I mean, literally sick to my stomach. I mean, yeah, where I'm stressed out, man, I am like and then we ended up in. And by the way, you know, I what I love about what is happening is that you are getting the love and respect that you deserve. Oh, you are beautiful and you are talented and you are smart and you are very good at what you do. And when we woke up that morning and we were driving to the airport to go to LA uh -huh. for promo and we found out that you were in people. Yeah. Oh my. I found out because a friend of a good friend of ours, Don, we talk about Don and Jeff on the podcast. I think we probably had him on the podcast yeah. before. Don texted me and she said, my friend just sent this to me. Look. And I clicked it and it said, who is Steve Trevino's wife? She was like, my friend just randomly, she reads celebrity gossip. That's like her stress reliever. And she celebrity. found it. And, and, wow. uh, <laughs> And, so and then we're, this done. fucker goes, we're in the car. She's like, oh, I got to find my article. I'm like, oh, <laughs> your article? It is who is Steve Trevino's wife. It is still our article. But all of a sudden it was my, I never say my. I'm always we. This one over here, where's my he article? Laughing when I just I died that. laughing. I'm like, oh, I see how things are. But, uh, you know, uh, you know, I. But that, we had no idea it was coming out. But that's Someone was like, did they call you? Did they ask you questions? I was like, I don't know. I don't know how they know I it was play so the piano. Crazy like, the or knew how to play knew. the piano. Like, I don't know. But I, I was like, what I, what, I, what I set out to do with this special was to make it special. Yeah. And to deliver so many different things. And one of those things I wanted to deliver was the love I have for you. Yeah. Right. And and how talented you are and how strong you are and your your sense of humor. I also wanted to accomplish the goal of finding those heartfelt moments. Yeah. That are real in our lives. I also wanted to deliver the fact that I truly, truly am a working class guy and I love the working class. Yeah. And I, I wanted to honor the working class. Yes. So when when we read these articles, it's really cool to hear that we nailed it. Well, there you know? there was what's always so interesting to me is because I'm a part and not just on this special, but your other specials. I am so much a part of the journey that I know I always know what your intent is behind your jokes. And it's interesting to see sometimes when your art, what you've created, gets misinterpreted. And with this special Simple Man in particular, because I'm directing it and producing it, I feel like we really tried to hammer home your message and what it's well, about in lots of choices and big choices it, and small subtle choices. But it also choices. cracks me up because, you know, the negative comments we're getting is like, oh, we're just going to perpetuate the female stereotype. And, oh, this dude is just going to complain about his wife. And it's like, no, it's more than that. Yeah. Right. Well, and by the way, it is not perpetuating the female stereotype. It is. This is my wife. Right. My wife. Not your wife. My wife. And a lot of times it is a personality versus B personality, right? You know, there are, there's a lot of couples that come up to me and go, oh my God, he's Renee yep. in our relationship. Yeah, right? and they love it and he, find the humor in it just right. as much. Yeah, He's the one that's the organizer. He's the one that has the containers. He's the one that, that is the hoarder. He, you know, yeah. so that's the crazy part too when you say that where they, they misinterpret the art. Right. Right, and it's like, no, I'm not, I'm telling you my marriage. Yeah. Right? Now, does it fit a lot of times the idea of male and female? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Right? But at the same time, it, 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 it's all with love and it's coming from a, a, a real place of, of heart. And, yeah. How, you know, how do we raise our kids? Right? Th that's a real question we have. How did me and you meet? People want to know. Right? Yeah. And then I make jokes along the way. Right? Yeah. 
Um, I actually, I, di- I didn't tell you this. I um, I was at a meeting yesterday for CASA. If you were in New Braunfels, I'm hosting CASA's um, annual fundraiser you're, in you're a couple of weeks. You're so famous and busy, but, and I don't like it. I'm going to be honest with you. But we're looking for like auction it. items, and if you want to come to the <laughs> event, please buy a ticket. Come. It's going to be a fun night. Anyway, I was meeting with the- Tell them what CASA is. Um, CASA oh. stands for Court Appointed S- Special Advocate. And they have them across the country, but basically they are an advocate assigned to kids who are stuck in the legal system. Um, so it, we don't or know if they're care. well. We don't know if they're going to go to a foster home or if they're going to go back to their parents. They are in that in between phase, and they're not a social worker because a social worker gets assigned to the case, and they're not the lawyer because they're legal representatives on both sides. They are they are a human, a person, volunteer that gets assigned to the child to be their special advocate, to look at both sides of the issue and give an honest opinion on what they think is best for the child. They don't represent the legal system. And you're helping they raise don't. money for that. Yes. Yeah. And, and and bring awareness to it because CASA needs volunteers. It's a really hard job to be that special advocate for a child. And so they need that too. They need money. They need those advocates to and and to continue to be able to fund the program. I'm proud of you. Um, but the reason I say that, thank you, is because uh, I was sitting in the meeting. You know, it's a big old board meeting, and I'm there with the auctioneer, and we've been talking and making jokes. And it's not till the end that he makes a connection of who I am and who you who are, and that he had seen the special. Um, and he said he just had the sweetest kind of things. Like it was really cool to hear hear from someone who watched it, not knowing at all who we were, and then him share his opinion. And it was exactly what you wanted to accomplish. He said, "You know what?" He's like, "I really liked this." He's like, "It was different." He said he used the words. He said it was special. He talked about the simple things of raising a family and how that's important. And he's like his tribute to the working man. And you see the, you know, the difference of the way his dad raised him versus how he was raised. He's like, he really talked about everyday stuff and made it funny and relevant. And I was like, yes, we did what we were trying to do. Like, you know, he got it. Rick, you know, I know Rick had a big old party at his house uh, to view it. How, how, what kind of reception are you receiving, Rick? Um, I had 33 people at the house and seven couldn't show up. And I can't tell you, I, I thought the cops were going to be called on us because we were outside and the laughter, the, and there's a thing you could tell when people are laughing because they're with you and you know, you're part of it, but like the howling laughter. And I felt like Renee for a second when anytime there was a funny joke, they would turn to me and look at me. Like I had, like, I didn't do anything with the joke. <laughs> <laughs> like good job Rick did you write that <laughs> but but I but I think we're accomplishing our goal with it and I, and I'm really proud of it and you know those pe- there's going to be haters there's well, always going to be that haters one writer I mean you and I interpreted his article his art we interpreted it differently but I felt like there was I can't even remember what publication it was that he wrote for what on, online website but he um was talking about simple man and he really sort of simplified your comedy and your performance. And then he's even like, well, you know, if you're a hardworking person who goes to work every day from nine to five and doesn't have a lot of time to watch funny things, then this show is for you <laughs> or something along. No, it was, all, but it was positive. Like, but I, was I like, mean, but I was like, yes, that it, that's the point. He dedicates this special to the working like, man. But the way he he chose to spun it and word it and articulate well, then, and it then, was a know, little unnerving. There for was me. one. There's one guy out there. He just annihilated me. I mean, this dude was like, this man is problematic. Oh, I don't think. I and read that this one. man, you read that one? Yeah, IMDb. yeah, IMDb. And and mm. this man is this, and this man is is a problem for our society. And I mean, just. Mm. You know, and then I go. I'm That's like, what I mean. That's what but I he mean. gave me one. He gave me a one star, right? And I'm and at first I'm like this fucking guy, man. Like, and then I saw the other reviews that he did. Yeah, and he thinks um, uh, Tig is funny. Well, I'm, and he, th- I you know, I'm like, oh, I'm good. I if this guy thinks right. Tig, like, as a freaking group of comedians, <laughs> all of us are like, uh, Tig is not funny. <laughs> like all of us know. The, and the and humor look, is subjective. And, and, I can, and by I the can way, that's that. what I was going to say. It is subjective. Yeah. But as a group of comedians, we all go, uh, that person's not funny. And he gave that person 
five stars. So I'm like, I am good. If he thinks that's five stars, that's not your mark. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm freaking good. Um, that's not your scale. You're not. But, but, it, by that. but it's it's hard when it's you, right? So just it, you know, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, imagine you go to work. Yeah. And then everybody is just critiquing your work. Yeah. Like, imagine you do your job every day. Say you're a nurse. And you go, you're trying to be the best nurse you can be. You go through your day and then they're And every day they're your, writing you Google reviews? Yeah, every day they're like, oh my God, that's that nurse, what are you doing? And I would never do it like that. And oh my, you know, and they're you blasting go, you on Yelp. Like I'm I just like I'm really trying to do the very best I can, right? Yeah. But I am proud of it. Well, and then, I will say that I know we're like talking about the little things that rubbed us the wrong way. But realistically, 90% of what positive. I have seen or it's read has been super, super positive. Very positive. And um, now to get into our kind of day to day that leading up to today. I mean, so Renee and I, we had press in Los Angeles. So we loaded the kids up. It happened to be spring break. We hauled ass to L.A. for two days. And really, if I'm being honest, the kids and I did not need to go for that. You could have done that on your own. But I also feel like I worry about you when you go to L.A. Like, one, I knew you were super vulnerable with the special coming out. But, two, I always feel like L.A. is toxic for you. And so I either want us to be there but there's, I, or I, I, you, you to know, have a good friend. But I want my family with me. Even though we didn't get to see each other during the day because I was running around working. Yeah. I just want to crawl in the bed with you. And I want to wake in, in, even though the kids are, you know, <laughs> Delilah is the absolute best. It's morning. <laughs> the at like thing now, if the light is barely poking through the hotel curtain, it's, it's morning. morning. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <coughs> and even though she wakes me up and she slaps my little face, Dad, <laughs> wake up, wake, wake up. up. It's morning. I want that, you know. And it, 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 it it's just, and that's what I think sometimes. People don't understand, right? It's like, I just want my family with me, for yeah. me, as a man. Like, I, I want to be with, I want to go to bed with my family, you know? Yeah. Um, but it was good. I mean, the press was great. We had a good time doing press. I got to meet um, all about that base, that base. Megan uh, Trainer. I'm a little jealous of that, that you got to meet her and I didn't. Renee, she is wonderful. Yeah. I mean... I was, she seems like it. Uh, she's wonderful. She seems. Like I cannot it. tell that all of Tatiana's here, by the way, and Miss Lori. I cannot tell all of you how wonderful that woman was. I mean, sweet and kind, yeah. and she works very hard to be a good mom. And her husband, who is the dude from Spy Kids, uh -huh. you know, she wants her. They're very much like us. She wants her kids with her. She wants her husband with her. I mean, I, I could not tell you how impressed I was with her. Yeah. And that song that she has with T-Pain, even though that's not my music, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. The lyrics were really cool. Yeah. And she's just, I mean, she literally was like, give me your phone. She grabbed my phone, put her phone number in my phone. Uh -huh. She goes, anytime I'm around, you and your wife got to come. And I'm like, oh my God, Okay. Super sweet. So I got to meet her while doing press. And at that time. I hear Lori typing over there. Lori, you know, looking we, at Megan Trainer's tour schedule. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we, we, you know, we, oh, we, we premiered on the 12th. It was number six, I believe. And we was were it proud five? of it. Did it? Did, I thought oh, it debuted five. at five. It debuted, it debuted at five. At five, and, sir. and we were like, oh, man, that's awesome. Then it dropped to six. Yes. And then boom, it catapulted it to, two. to two and stayed there for a couple of days. For like two or three days. Behind Guy Ritchie. I mean, when you did your press in New York, you did Good Morning America, you were at number two. Two. Yeah. I mean, it was, and we kind of stayed there for a little while. Then we yeah. went down to four, and then we just shit the bed. We, we disappeared from the top 10. Um, but, but it's, you know, so then we did LA, came home, packed our shit. One day. One day, went yep. to New York. It was really special to take Garrett to New York. He had he had been asking to go to New York. He's like, I he really want to go to New York. Really emotional about this trip. He was supposed to go like your I can't remember if it's your last two times or last three times, but we were there during COVID. We weren't able to and take you him. You played Times Square 
And we were like, you have to have a vax card. It's a whole thing, Garrett. It's just not. Everything's shut down. It's not the time to go to New York City. And then the next time I went with you, he, we were going to bring him again. But Omicron popped back up and there was a huge snowstorm. And so we were like, Garrett, again, That's now you need a vax yeah. card again. And the snowstorm is just not a good time to go. Um, so it worked out. So this time it fell around spring break and he was so excited. Well, but it was it was it was interesting because he man, he would hold on to me when we'd walk the streets. Yeah. Because he was overwhelmed with like, oh, my there's so many people. Well, we stayed in oh. Times Square, which is like one of the most crowded places. Not all your New York sidewalks are like that. Like New Yorkers avoid Times Square. Right. Um, and we stayed in the middle of it. So, yeah, it gets it gets crazy. Crowded. He was he was definitely. um overwhelmed you could tell he was overwhelmed with with all of it yeah but he was like oh my gosh this is so cool and then um we we split up and you yes. had a girl's day and then garrett and i had a guy's day we went to go see um the new york rangers yes play the islanders and it was awesome in madison square garden in madison square garden and i you know i posted that we were there and then all of a sudden you know somebody from the new york rangers comes over hands me two gift bags and was like, hey, you and your son want to take a picture on the ice after the game? That's such a good Like, go to 113, your name's on the list. I'm like, awesome. But that was Garrett's first experience with a live hockey game, and it was so cool that they won. And then when the Rangers score, they do, like, a whole, like, chant. Uh -huh. So they scored five times. So Well, and it's, like, an epic game because it was, like, New York against New Jersey or something, yeah. right? And then so Garrett, like, learned the – you know, we, we'd stand up and, you know – we would do the cheer <laughs> with the with everybody. I mean, high fives. I mean, Garrett. It was just so cool to see. And all I keep thinking is, I'm gonna save that picture because when I sell out Madison Square Garden, I'm gonna be like, man, I was there with my kid. Yeah. As a spectator, and now I get to perform here, right? Yeah. Um, but it was it was. It was a really great experience for me and Garrett. And and you went to... Delilah and I went... A lot of our friends have been doing, um, when they visit New York, Tea at the Plaza, like Eloise at the Plaza, the book series. But I felt like that was a little grown up for Delilah. Um, so they have Tea at the American Girl Store. And she loves baby dolls and dolls right now. That's her jam. So we did that. But I feel like I have to tell <laughs> any mom who is considering Tea at the American Girl Store, um, you can borrow a doll. You don't even have to have your doll. So I showed up early and I was like, oh my gosh, Delilah's got to like pick out a doll and I got to get her to make a decision before we sit down and have tea so that she can put it in the little, you put it in a little high chair. They have special high chairs that like oh. clip onto the table for your doll, right? Well, I'm looking for the, where the entrance to the cafe is and a girl, thank God, one of the workers tells me, she's like, it's okay. She's like, you don't have to choose your doll. They have dolls that you can borrow there. And I'm like, oh good, we can make a choice like as we're leaving. So she right. doesn't want to swap out her dolls after the tea and I'm buying right. two. Cause these are like, these dolls are like a hundred bucks oh my God, for expensive. a doll. Yes. Um, and thank goodness we borrowed one because Delilah spilt lemonade tea all over the front of the doll's She's dress. She's like feeding it. Like, you, like can decorate your, you can decorate a cupcake for you and your doll. Delilah's shoving pounds of icing on a cupcake in the doll's <laughs> face. And all I keep thinking is, thank God I did not pay for this doll. Thank God I didn't pay for this doll because I would have been having a conniption fit. Um, and then it was heartbreaking because we, we, we Garrett wanted to see a Broadway show, so we picked Wicked. Yes, and I should have known better. Like that bad mom moment. That one's well, on me. Well, we found out that that it's five and up, and of course Delilah's three. But it's not. But so, she's not scared of witches. She loves witches. She keeps well, saying, mom, the "Wicked witch." I mean, <laughs> her mom's I a love witch, Halloween so, so much. She's used to it. So it wasn't that she was scared of the witches. It was just. Um, so we ended up just going me, you, and 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 Garrett. Yeah. And again, like going back to my special and me. Yes. You know, the the girls behind us. So uh, a school bought all these tickets. So they all had like school. It's like because it was spring break. It's the time of year when a lot of like the school choirs or the school bands go and perform at Carnegie, not Carnegie Hall, at um, Lincoln Center. But th there was a, an entire group, probably several a whole, hundred. A whole choir, a whole band, a whole I school mean, like, marching band. About a hundred. <laughs> well, we have great seats. I mean, we're, we're not in the front by all means, but we got... Great seats. Yeah. And we're yeah, not I mean, on the balcony. We're like they're in the pricey. middle. Right? They're and they're pricey. very expensive. And oh my God, the and these tickets. And these tickets suck. And, and I'm just sitting there going, Oh my God, like if that's ever my kid. 
I almost wanted to turn around and tell them how much the seats cost because I knew how much they paid for them. And I was like, look at how many of you there are at whatever a pop for each of these tickets. They're good seats. Yeah. She's like, it's because our school's cheap. And I was like, girl, you have no idea. You have no idea. And it just, it turned me off so bad. And and I, I, I mean, she's a kid, but I, after that, I was like, do you know how much these seats cost? (laughs) No, I mean, like, really? Like, I mean, I mean, I'm listening to these girls talk and I'm just like, screw you guys, man. Like at that age, they're high school. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, People don't understand. I never left Gregory Portland until my 20s. Yeah. Our vacations were San Antonio, New Braunfels. Yeah, I didn't see a Broadway play until college. Astros. We'd go see the Astros in Houston. Yeah. Our vacations consisted of San Antonio, Austin, Houston. Yeah. That Our Garner State Park. <clears throat> and we, we'd, we'd camp. You know, I mean, that that was my whole life. I mean... You going to Corpus Christi and going to the mall for us was a huge deal. Yeah. Like a huge, I mean, we would ride the escalators because in Portland there were no escalators. You'd go like, these are escalators. Look, let's go up and down. Yeah. You know, the loop. Oh my God. Eating at Luby's at the mall. My dad would be like, we're going to Luby's. Oh, like everybody get dressed <laughs> up. Like let's, we're going to, you know, that was like once a year. We're going to Luby's. And then dad would be like, get whatever you want. He said, get whatever you want. We can get the jello, you know? <laughs> like, I mean, that was a big deal for Dessert me. Dessert is not included. I didn't get on a plane. Well, I did get on a plane when I broke my back and had to go to San Antonio. I mean, to Dallas. Yeah. Uh, and that had been the only time I had ever been to Dallas uh, when I had broken my back. But that yeah. was the only plane I got on. That's a 45-minute flight. Yeah. You know, it wasn't until I started touring as a comedian in my 20s yeah, that I started to see other things. I was so Texas when I when I went other places and men were not wearing boots. I was confused. <laughs> I was like, grown wear men wear tennis everywhere? shoes yeah. at night? Like they're out at the comedy club with tennis shoes on that's ridiculous you're funny but no that's like yeah. that was a culture shock for me where i'm like every man i know at night when they go to a wedding or a dance or an event they wear cowboy boots yeah and here i was going where's your boots <laughs> like it was weird yeah that's how crazy like i had never had um Chinese food. I was going to say, because all your uncles and everything, they probably had work boots and cowboy boots, and that was it. Those were mm-hmm. their only dress shoes. They didn't have the Yeah, that shoes. was it. Yeah. Um, you know, I never had Chinese food. I never had Greek food. I never, you know, yeah. I mean, I was introduced to the world at in my 20s because I was touring. Yeah. But to hear these girls and, uh, my school's cheap. Bitch, you're in New York. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Wicked you're watching <laughs> Wicked on Broadway. <laughs> what did you think of the show? Of Wicked? Yeah. I'd seen it before. I'd seen it when I was in college. I did the whole, you like show up at the theater early in the morning and you stand in line and they do like a lottery for discounted tickets. Um, So I'd seen it before, but with like one of the early casts, it's really hard. I mean, I I love it. It's a great play. But for me, when you see it with the original cast, which was um, Idina Menzel and Kristen Chenoweth, that's who I got to see it with. Um, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Idina Menzel is, everyone knows her cause she's the voice of Elsa and Frozen, but she comes from Broadway. Um, and Kristen Chenoweth, what would you know her from? She was on Glee for a little bit. Idina Menzel was too. I think they were both on the TV show Glee. They worked in TV, but, um, they're both amazingly talented and they're the original performers. What, um, what message did you get from that play? Uh, there's, there's several messages. In Wicked. Um, Yeah, there's several messages in Wicked. What did you get? One is not to judge a book by its cover, right? One is um, the love and appreciation kind of for the underdog and taking care of the underdog. Uh, It's also about standing up for what you believe is right. Um, And And the way people interpret. The appearances of things are not always what they seem. Do you know Wicked, Lori? Do you know that? I love Wicked. I've seen it, I think, three times. On Broadway? 
no, no. It was no. tours. The like the yeah, the Broadway yeah. level oh. production tours as well. So there's the people performing it on Broadway, and then there's also like a touring it's production. On the Broadway, on the uh, majestic stage, it, yeah. The calendar for this. No, year? I. No, I mean, I. Uh, my, the biggest takeaway I took was was the how people interpret things, right? Because of appearances. Yeah, or how one story can change. Yep. You know, and, and with the, time and, and who people. really is the bad guy? Yeah. You know, who who really is the bad guy here? Yeah. You know, and it happened to be the good witch was actually the bad guy. Right? I enjoyed it. I, the wizard. I, or the, yeah, the wizard. Yep. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool. I think I think Delilah really would have got scared when the monkeys were flying around. Yeah, it wasn't the witches that were scary. It was the the winged monkeys and the there's a massive dragon at the top. Because even stage. even Garrett was like, uh, because the the monkeys go swinging and then Garrett like grabbed me, and he was like, you could tell he was a little. Yeah, Garrett grabbed my Garrett was holding my hand for a good part of the movie, which was really sweet. We had a lot of good mommy all, son moments some, on on our New York trip. Took some good trip. pictures and and had some great meals and. Yeah. I, I, you know, wait, wait, I before was you get so off, stressed. Yep. Wait, before you get off Wicked, you want to hear a cool Wicked uh, fact thing? Yes, yes, absolutely. Do you know the Wicked Witch's name? Alphaba? Yeah. Do you know why it's named Alphaba? No. Why is it? Why is she Alphaba? No, because the writer of Wizard of Oz is L. Frank Baum. Alphaba. No kidding. Interesting little Did factoid. you know that or you just Googled it? I am a massive Wicked fan. Are oh. you? Did you get to see it with the Wick- with the original cast? Unfortunately not. Um, I saw it in Detroit and then once in New York and the, the original wasn't there. And the fact that Steve doesn't know who the original cast is, it pains my heart. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Okay, no, I picture mean... it. So there's, there's one, like, the epic song... Um, defying gravity when she like the wicked witch alphabet's character goes flies up and she's like in the circle and she's like belting it out so picture the girl who plays elsa the way she sings on frozen like belting out that song i thought i thought the girl that we saw did a great job yeah no no she was she was good too she was uh, she was alphabet was strong too but Christian and Christian Chenoweth, when she plays Glinda the Good Witch, she does like this little yodel with her voice, and her voice is naturally so high pitched. She's so stinking cute as the Good Witch. I, enjoy, I enjoyed it. Witch. I mean, you know, I like I like the production. Yeah. Like I like to see how they do things, and I watch like how they make things appear to be a different set. The set how the set know, transforms. How they transform it, and how they. They use the stage, like That's all that what stuff. That's makes Broadway. The Broadway stuff. is the the production value, you know. And you're listening to the songs with an orchestra, a live orchestra in the orchestra pit. With That's what's so cool, the music. Know? And you're just like, wow. I mean, the way they do all of it. I yeah. mean, it's just amazing. Can you imagine doing? I know you talk about like when you do your. I'm sure you can imagine when you do your three shows back to back on a Friday night. Can you imagine singing like that two shows in a day? On Sundays, they do a matinee well, and then they do another performance in the evening. At the end of preparing to film, I pretty much have my set verbatim. Uh huh. And I hate it. I hate because it feels like I'm on a script. Yeah, I know. Right? And when I'm on the road, you I'm, don't want to go rote. autopilot. On the on the on the road, man, I'm like you know throwing a little something here, a little something there. I'm changing the order. I'm you know, stopping, I'm pausing, I'm, you know, messing around more. But when I film, like that month leading up to filming, I'm like practicing it almost verbatim. That's what I don't know how they can do. I don't know how they can mentally be in it, saying the same words, standing at the same spots, doing it day in, day out. Like I do not, I would go crazy. Yeah. I would go fucking insane if I had to do Broadway where every word's the same every place you stay I mean I mean you you know every it's like it's perfect it's perfectly choreographed every single step except for remember we saw um, uh, off Broadway we saw um, uh, uh, the one with the little little shop of hearts and and, you know the black girls that sing one of them came out because it was COVID, and she had her mask around her, uh, around her face, and, and she was like, and I, like I just looked at her, and she like pulled it off, because <laughs> I guess backstage they had to wear them, and then when they go out, you know, so she forgot. Yeah. So, but I like to notice stuff um, like that. But 
you know, Good Morning America, it was in crazy, like, the production. Oh, and, my gosh. When we walked in that set, and Steve, I was so, like. And they are so, like, freaking on it. Dude. Their stage manager. Eddie, I think, was his name. Like, their you stage walk manager in, was awesome. Mr. Trevino, security's with me. Security follows me back. Here's your green room. But there's, like, 14 green rooms in there with people. Yeah. I'll write this way to make up. I mean, it was crazy. And it's all perfectly timed because the segments are so fast. So at this point, this producer comes in and talks to you. And then at this per- point, this person comes in and makes sure you're ready. And, you know. Absolutely insane. And I think it went really well. And, and again, I love the fact that they let you have a microphone. Well, so they came in and they mic'd you and then they saw me and they were like, wait, we're supposed to have two mics. And then one of the producers was in the room at the time and she's like, no, it's just one mic. We just need one mic. And then when I walked on stage with you, they said, oh, no, you're going to need this. And then instead of like wireless miking me like they had with you, they gave me like a handheld mic. And they're like, you stand right here by the camera. And uh, and the sound guy was really sweet. He goes, all right, we gave you a mic. Make sure it's not down here. If we cut to you, have it up here. And I was like, I'm going to be like this the whole time. <laughs> but I think, I mean, I was just so proud of that segment because it really showed how funny you were and how quick you were. And I mean, I, I, I think it went really well. And, and all the Good Morning America staff was like, wow, that was great. And, you yeah. know, congratulations. It was it's really cool. It's cool when the hosts, like, because I've watched you do a lot of morning segments, is, you know, when you're touring and stuff. But it's it was it's always cool when you feel like one the host actually watched the material because they're so busy you know they do interviews on stuff they haven't seen or read before, um, but two when you also feel like they enjoyed participating in the segment like it was fun for them as well. You know I did the 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 Texas Country Music Awards yesterday. Yeah. And I did the red carpet where they ask you questions and uh-huh. it was it was so great because I, I go over there and they go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Bryson's coach, and I just <laughs> lost it. I was like, oh, my God, it's so perfect, so funny. Oh, that's awesome. And I just love all the pictures of the people sending, like, their containers. and Yes. Uh, uh, oh, my know. God. Yeah, someone um, tagged me in a social media post, and she's watching the special, and then you see the camera pans down to the floor by her TV, and there are tubs. And she says, I feel personally victimized, Steve Trevino. <laughs> But that's what I love about it. It is it is very personal and it yeah. is, you know, very real to us. Yeah. You know, and I oh, and people and it's relate. been so cool to hear from people who like you can tell people really enjoyed seeing either themselves or their family member in the very end and all the pictures, all those simple oh, man, man pictures. That, you that's know, been all the great messages too. we've gotten where people go, Thank you. I made it in the credits, you know, you yeah. put my picture up. I mean my 90-year-old dad, we showed it to him. Like, that was cool. It's really cool. And, and it's, been, it's been a whirlwind. Um, you know, we did Corpus Christi. Thank you, Corpus. Sold that thing out like crazy. And then we went to McAllen. And that was really special for me because, you know, your mom's family is all from what we call the Valley, the Texas yeah. Valley. My mom doesn't live there anymore, but a lot of that, those family members still live there. My grandma's sisters are still there. My my mom's mom, they were kind of the ones that, that left, but the rest of the family stayed down there in the Valley. So they're all very close. Lots of but cousins and great aunts. It was the, the pride they had for you. And I mean, we, <laughs> dude, we had uh, probably 20 no, my mom said they like went and they were looking at everyone who was invited and they counted in the pictures. We had 50 cousins. I had 50 cousins. They and all came in like pouring in. Two great aunts. And, and they're immediately like, 80s, like taking pictures with Renee. I mean, and then Daddy Raymond, because I, you know, I needed to eat. I got there. And, and by the way, thank you, um, Chick-fil-A for, for catering. <laughs> no joke. And your dad, your dad was protecting me. He's eating. He's eating. <laughs> He's got to eat, guys. Let him eat. Let it, Steve's got to eat, you know. Um, and but I was they, dying because the Chick Fil A guy had a it, name tag. His name tag said Jonathan, and I was like, "Is that a joke?" <laughs> no, they, they were, were like, "No, no here's your baby Jonathan, Jonathan from your other special, right?" <laughs> um, but I was just so proud, and it just makes me happy because, you know, Renee, you are talented, and people do not know. Like Renee, Renee was best actor in the state of Texas. Renee got a scholarship to go to NYU to study acting. And that is the most prestigious acting school. And because we are Mexican-American, Renee was not getting opportunities. 
And together we've been able to do that. And I'm so happy that you finally get the love and respect you deserve Aww. as a talented person, you know, that we did it together. Yeah. And, you know, you ended up in people because of what we have done. Yeah. And you ended up on Good Morning America because what we have done. Yeah. Um, we're able to say my Good Morning America interview and my People magazine. Um, no. But, but you know, it, it, it's, it, it is, it, I always tell people, when you think you deserve a promotion, wait a year. Mm. Wait a year. Because what you think, like me and you have felt like, when are we going to get, you know, when are they going to see it? Yeah. When is Renee going to get the love she deserves? And then, well, maybe it's this special. And then you didn't get it. And then, oh, man, well, let's keep going and let's keep doing the podcast and let's keep building your social media and let's, you know. Yeah. When is it going to happen? Yeah, I think there's a lot of you truth know, to that. It, it, takes finally, a, it, takes, it takes a while. It takes a little longer than you think. <clears throat> yeah. You know, be, when you think you, you should walk in there and ask for that raise, just wait. Yeah. You know, because you will get what you deserve. It just takes long. It takes time. You know, and... I am just so proud of of me and you and our team and all the things that we've accomplished together. Yeah. Um, you know, Rick has believed in us since day one. Yeah, me um, too. Thank and, you, Rick. I love you. And, you know, and, and Rick has been there to throw shit at the wall and see if it sticks. Yeah. And, you know, I do believe that all the things that me, you, Rick, and the team have done have led up to this. And it, yeah. it is awesome to yeah there are things that people have never seen like we've made pilot presentations together before with rick and like pitched them and you know no, no one's ever seen them yep nobody but we're doing uh, i will we're say doing people are carrying now we literally got a call uh to show that old tape and that old tape is so outdated so outdated are you talking about the one we filmed in fredericksburg yep yeah wow. some people some people are asking about it um, and Rick got a phone call. Some big things might be happening for uh, Steve and Captain Evil podcast. Uh, we've got some stuff in the works that, yeah. that Rick is uh, kicking the ball down the field to see uh, what that could bring. But um, it, it has definitely made our life <laughs> these past few months million miles an hour. Yeah. Million miles an hour. I mean, it's been cool. I, I, I told Tatiana today in the car, I said, dude, I'm taking Thursday and Friday off. I don't give a shit. Tell everybody to go kick rocks because I need to be home and Easter's right around the corner. Yeah. Good Friday is Friday. And, you know, we have a massive uh, party to throw. <laughs> I think we have 90 re uh, RSVPs. No, it's more I checked. How many? Yeah, I think we're at like 161. Oh, it's going to be nuts. I love it. So excited. And that that and that doesn't include all the other people you invited that I don't know about. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> and that only includes the people that I like RSVP'd. Um but you know, and not to mention Yeah. Not to mention we had um um Garrett's tournament. Yeah. This weekend and, yeah. and I'm so Delilah's proud Delilah's first soccer game. I'm so proud of Garrett, man. He's he's just really stepping it up. Yeah. And I'm just, as a man, I'm really yeah. proud of him. I mean, he's, it's been rough, but he's really handling it in a way that, that I don't think I couldn't have had. I, I'm, I'm an adult and I'm having, I am yeah. not handling it like Garrett. Yeah. Garrett's handling it better than me. Yes, I agree. And, and <laughs> I, I, I also think. I love you. No, I just think it's It's sad. hard. No, for me, it, it was, I, for me, this, it was hard too. So I, I really, really sympathize with him and he is handling it like I, a I just think it's sad that, that this, that at AU baseball, the amount of drama and bullshit that comes along with but it. But you know what? It's life, it's life lessons to be learned. I mean, yep. compare it to, <laughs> compare it to the, the mess in Hollywood and other things you've had to deal with in your career. Like it's life lessons. To no, be you learned. have to learn to, you know, you get shake it off. Yep, That's get, not a Megan trainer song. That's a Taylor Swift song. Yep. I was trying to think of a Megan, Megan trainer song. Um, get kicked in the nuts and get up and keep going. <laughs> That's my, I've been That's not a Megan trainer song either. <laughs> Somebody write that song. I get kicked in the nuts and I keep going. And I keep. Uh, I feel like that might be a country song. Kicked in the nuts with cowboy boots. Yep, I've been kicked in the nuts so many times in my career, in my life, and I just, <laughs> I just, I just patch them up and keep going. 
And then number two, you got to number two on Netflix. Um, Rick, any questions? I know you have one. Um, do you, is there something that surprised you guys, both of you, from either a message or something from the special or how people are reacting to a certain joke? Not really. I mean, I, you know, I, I just, again, and we've talked about it before, I love when people say, you know, you, you, you help save our marriage. Yeah. You know, or you got me through the hard times. Yeah. Or, um, you know, my spouse had cancer and the only thing that would make them laugh is is you, you know. Yeah. Um, that's been very, very rewarding. But on the, I mean, I was surprised that we, we went to number two. Yeah. You know, I was, I was yeah, like, that was very oh, wow, unexpected. this is pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, um, and, and, and for the tour, cause right now we just have the, the, what would this be? Spring. Mm -hmm. to, so my tour is, is right now just to May and we have a few dates in the summer. We haven't even put the fall tour up yet. I'm just amazed on, that's what surprised me, Rick is. The amount of tickets that we are selling now daily mm -hmm. has gone up dramatically, you know. So that has been kind of like, oh wow, the Netflix special is really affecting ticket sales. Yeah. So that's been a surprise, to you, Renee. Um, just that that nine. It, it really is ninety percent positive, positive feedback, and I think you know, with others, you, there's just so many more hecklers out there in the world. So I was telling you, I feel like this is a testament to like you and always being true to who you are and who your audience is. I think that's why 98% is positive feedback because you are very genuine. You do know who your audience is and you speak to them and you're not pretending to be something that you're not so that two percent that that is negative i'm like they don't even matter you know what i mean they're not they're not your crowd they're never going to be well, your megan, crowd they're megan trainer told me she was, their, she was their ghosts she was steve their ghosts she was they don't exist they're not even real because they're just ghosts. Well, and there's that too. There are bots on the internet. Like I, I've seen some other friends who are, you know, getting some negative comments for different things. Well, now you know too, Renee's famous because like they're, they're making fake Renee accounts. <laughs> yes, when Renee, when Renee's getting fake accounts. Welcome to my life. <laughs> um, but apparently they were commenting on your posts as me and saying like, DM me. I want to know more about you and like asking questions and things like that, like being creepos as me. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of people that have a crush on you, honey. I think I think there's people out there that think you're you're uh, the bee's knees. <laughs> Look at these girls in here. The cat's meow. Is that another one? The cat's meow. I think. Uh, I think I'm just gonna start responding that way in text. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, didn't you? Good. And I'm gonna respond rough. <laughs> I don't know if that was a good bark or not, but I tried. I, I know we're missing so much stuff to talk about. I know we are. It's been a crazy roll. I just, I just thank you. Thank you to everyone who has been like so well, supportive. And, and thank you to everyone who's sharing it. Like, how many things were we tagged in? that people shared like that I think is really what helped get it to number two, because there were people who said we did see those comments too. I've never heard of you and wow, I'm blown away and I'm a new fan. New fan. And that was, that. that was really cool. And I think that is because people who do love us and support us did share and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cause a share or a like doesn't cost anything. So thank you. I just hear, uh, I just hear my dad. Anything that's good. You got to work harder. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> And that was yesterday. That was yesterday, Steve. <laughs> Got to work harder. Oh, I love you know. Um, but no, I and I want to thank Rebecca Creek too. Like the, you know, the love and support that they've given us has been really awesome, and, yeah. and I can't get enough of that double Spanish oak. I just drink the. Oh shit my god, out of it. that's right. It's we're like already over, and we didn't get to talk about the Tobin Center and the premiere there with the Q and A. Yeah. That, well, was, the Tobin, that was so cool too. The, the, you know, we're we're gonna hopefully work out something really cool with the Tobin because, you know, they have really opened um, their arms to us and yeah. just been 
amazing. I forgot and, about and that. that was, Tobin is gorgeous. It was and, so cool to watch your special on that big old screen. That was the first time that like I got to sit in the audience and like hear people laugh out loud at it. That was. For I, me, I don't know that what I did, super, but I did not watch special. that bullshit. You know, I know you can't watch it, but for me, that was super special to hear them laughing. And Rick, then, do you think that I'll ever watch it? God, I hope so. It's pretty good. I do it's too. Pretty good. pretty good, Rick said. It's that's pretty good. I, mean, um, I think we're gonna have to give him like a couple of shots of Rebecca Creek or something, and make Laurie, him, any like questions? tie him to a chair and make him watch it, Rick. Tatiana, any questions? Do I want to do movies or shows next? Yeah, I've always wanted to be in a movie or or, or do a, a TV show and. You know, Steve is so funny. Can I chime in? Can I just, I, I, no, I just want to say. I mean, she's I, on people now. So. No, <laughs> no, I just want to say that a lot of times people think that comedians cannot act, right? And they're afraid to like, oh, they stand up on stage and tell jokes and they're funny, but that doesn't translate to film. I have seen Steve. I've seen Steve audition for stuff. I've been his reader behind the camera with him and you, you can act. You really, you really can. You're, but I act every day on stage. As a you know character, I mean? you know, I, 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 act when I perform. I mean, yeah. When I, I, and I think that's that's what makes this special. Um, I think that makes what I do special is that when I when I am you, I really am you. No, you know? you're not. Well, no, but I'm acting like <laughs> no, I'm a good actor. Right you know what I mean? <laughs> this fucking people you shit's think going that's to her a head. Good version of me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Um, I will say, I mean, some people are like, well, why do you have to use profanity? And, you know, that, that's that been a note that, that has come in. But, you know, I, it's how I talk. Well, no, you know what I thought was interesting? Someone who, like, really loves us, who is a big supporter of us on Instagram. She's so sweet. She always sends me sweet messages. She That was her first initial reaction. She's like, I, like, was so excited to see this special, she goes. And then the language was just a really – was a turnoff for me. But then she loves us so much. She's like, I kept sh- – I was sharing it with my friends. She's like – and then when I brought up the profanity, she's like, they didn't even notice it. They didn't even bat an eye at it, you know? So I think it just – that one's like, – I don't – it's just the way I talk. And, you know, Lori is in our family. Uh, we're very loud and very – um, you know, uh, we use very strong language in yeah. our family, but, um, I'm uh, all in all, I'm very proud. I can't thank all the people that, that watch the podcast enough, but we need to continue to share. Yes, please. We need to continue to put it out there. We need please. to continue to not let it, you know, they call it, you know, the, the handkerchief goes in the air. I need you guys before it hits the ground to keep picking it up. Yeah. I mean, my thing is now, so, you know, the when it made Netflix top 10 and it was in there in that week, it was such great visibility for you um, to so that you can be exposed to people who didn't know who you were. Now I like, now I'm checking, is it being suggested and what categories it, is it being suggested in? And did they suggest it to you? And did they suggest it to you? Like, I just want, I want it to stay up there on that screen so that people don't have to search for it. And, and the way we do that is with with views with people and, and watching. Just it. so people, you know, understand, you know, I'm very grateful that that Netflix asked us to do this and paid us to do it. But what people don't know is that this is not a Netflix Netflix. It is a Netflix. And what I mean by that is sometimes Netflix gets behind a comedian. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll just use Tom Segura for example, right? Or, or Gabriel Iglesias or um, you know, Gabe's, I'll use Gabe as an example, very good, you know, cause he's a good friend. Um, you know, when he did the Dodger stadium one, that was a Netflix coming to him saying, we're going to promote it. We're going to blow it up. We're getting behind you a hundred percent. Right. This was one of those deals where they go, well, let's see what Steve can do. We'll give him some money. It's we'll an put acquired it project. It's an acquired That's how they project. To it. it is not a, Hey, we're going to promote this. We're going to blow it up. We're going to put billboards. We're going to really, really push this because we really believe in in what Steve does. Yeah. We so get to number two because you're, you're... The people. Yeah. You the know, people so who love you. We need to continue, please, to <clears throat> keep pushing it out there and keep going because I think the next move is that Netflix does give us that big one Yeah, that they're going to get behind. And, and with y'all's help, we can do it. And everything that Renee and I have done is with y'all's help. And we are so grateful. Yeah. Uh, and that's another reason that we, we put it out there uh, for the working class because yeah. all of you have made me and Renee and got her in people. <laughs> Tell everyone that your new shows on the road are not the same. 
Oh yeah, so and that's another thing. Like, a, question we get a lot of lot. people are like, "Well, are they'll come to my show and they'll go? I didn't watch the special because I didn't want to see the." Even material. one of my cousins yep. in the valley was yep. like, "Oh, I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna watch Simple Man, but I haven't seen it yet because I knew we were coming to see it live." And I'm like, "It's not the same show." Oh, I've already written an entire new hour. Um, it's it's really good. I don't think it's great yet. But it'll get there. Yeah, but it's really fun. It's a good show. My parents enjoyed it. Oh, they your, saw it your dad was like, "Hey, cat bro, cat I don't know how you it. do it." <laughs> Renee's dad, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> it was great, but the, <laughs> he, hombre, it was great. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's good, and we're we're very proud to be out there doing that all that new material. So, yeah. um, Colorado Springs, uh, oh no, uh, Pueblo, Colorado. Yeah, my first time in Wyoming at, in Cheyenne. Um, we're doing a string of Florida Denver, dates. Denver, string of Florida dates. Um, doing a casino, Thunder Valley in, in Sacramento. Yes. So stevetrevino.com for all the details. We love you guys. Um, I hope Thank this podcast you. was satisfactory <laughs> because apparently last the last one we did was really good. So we'll see you guys. Thanks. Thanks.